Okay. But thank you so much for coming on today. So everyone, this is Iselis and she is a wonderful mama to be. Can you show everybody your beautiful belly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there we go. <laughs> so you can rest assured, for those of you that are watching, you can rest assured that uh, she is pregnant and she does speak from experience. So she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> I'm very much so, pregnant. <laughs> yes. So Celis is, um, so we're filming this in Miami, Florida. And today we want to talk about the local community in South Florida and some topics that we both feel really passionately about. And we're gonna touch on pregnancy, uh, the Latin and Hispanic community and self-care, healthcare, and what that looks like in you know, this time, 2021, kind of as we're not really coming out of COVID, but just really sharing her journey in terms of what she's been able to realize during pregnancy and the awareness and the different things that she's come across. Um, our hope is to motivate women. Our hope is to inspire uh, women, particularly in the Hispanic community, but all women really, because we believe that self-care is mental, emotional, physical, and Iselis has been kind enough to, well, is going to share her story mm -hmm. and what she's come across. And we're really, really hoping that this touches your heart, this opens your mind, and this encourages you to seek out the maternity support that you need. We will be touching on prenatal massage because that's how we know each other. <laughs> And, uh, but our hope is really to inspire and to support um, through words, through ideas and, and share her story and allow you to maybe take steps towards feeling that you are worthy of that support or seeking out providers in your community, whether it's in Miami, South Florida or wherever you are watching this video. So Iselis, thank you so much for coming on again. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So let's start off by share with me your pregnancy journey. When did you find out you were pregnant? How many weeks are you today? <laughs> I am about to be 35 this Friday. Okay, yeah. almost 35 weeks. Yay. So share with us uh, when you found out you were pregnant. How did how did that happen? Where were you? Who were you around? <laughs> Well, um, actually, I was here at home, and it was a planned baby. Thank God it was our first time trying out, you know, seriously trying out. And, um, and it became a reality very fast. Uh, we were getting ready to get married. So we were in the middle of, you know, wedding preparation and all that. And then I knew, and I told my husband, and he was in shock for a good solid I would say three minutes like the whole <laughs> and he just repeated like after and after you know like really like for real is this like seriously I'm like yes it is I'm pregnant you know uh he was super excited and it was kind of hard you know um <clears throat> wiggling the wedding preparation and the baby thing and my first trimester was horrible mm. I experienced all kind of things I, I couldn't get out of bed um, it was very bad mm. um, but it's funny because as soon as as I knew like it was wedding week the all the things disappeared like all nausea vomiting and all that disappeared like baby was like okay mom I'm gonna let you, you know, like get married and finish this. And I was like, yes, thank you, baby. <laughs> um, really sweet. Um, so it was it was planned, but it kind of like came on. And this is this is your first child. So uh, you're a first time mama. So it's very exciting. Um, 
tell the viewers where a little bit about yourself, where you came from, how long you've been in the United States, because I know a lot of women are going to be watching that have similar, a uh, similar background story. Yes. So I've been here in USA about seven years already. Um, I came from Mexico, but I'm Cuban. I was living in Mexico for a couple of years and my family is Cuban. My husband is Mexican. So we had a, a great communication because I live in Mexico, so I kind of know the culture very well. And um, we, you know, we make a great team. And um, yes, I actually uh, do taxes. I have a tax office. And my main focus there is to help Latin communities that struggle a lot with all the, you know, finances and all the literacy about numbers and all these decisions that we should make and we should know about. And I focus a lot on that. And actually that's been most of our conversations, like, you know, trying to help our community in the better ways we can and try to spread the world, you know, about, about all the things that, that we can do for ourselves, for our bodies, for our minds. So um, yeah, that's kind of my background. I actually studied film. It wasn't related at all to what I'm, do, I'm doing, but um, I like to record myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I do a bunch of stories and Instagram posts, and, and I think I'm, I'm happy <laughs> with that part too. <laughs> yes. I, I have to say, Iselius has been probably one of the key figures in the past you know, few months since we've started working together in prenatal massage. She has been such an incredible source of inspiration on her end, mm -hmm. uh, utilizing mediums and platforms, social media, and just really uh, logging her journey uh, through social media and, and different posts and things like that. And it's worked. A lot of women through her posts which is the beauty of being so transparent and just being an individual and sharing your story. And she's just done such a fantastic job. And there have been a lot more women who are curious because as we know in film or in any type of media, when we see someone that we can relate with, whether it's through culture, language, um, whatever it, it may be, that's why representation is so important in media. Yeah. We can identify, especially when that person discovers something positive, discovers help, and it's not something that's really known about. So I just want to say thank you so much yes. for <laughs> sharing your story and being so open <laughs> about your pregnancy journey. And, so, and it's incredible, actually, how many people ask me, like, wait, can you get a massage while you're pregnant? I'm like, yes, <laughs> and you should, you have to, like, you know, it's like extremely important. I used to get massages before um, getting pregnant, and for me, it was like a routine self-care thing that you cannot miss every month. And and while, while I'm pregnant, I was in my head too, like, oh, maybe I can or maybe not. And when my wife, when my wife recommended, I was like, Wait, this is amazing. <laughs> yes, yes, it is really exciting. So tell us about, um, you You chose not a very conventional path for your pregnancy. So you chose to hire a midwife. Um, you chose a lot of natural therapies, you know, such as massage therapy for your pregnancy, different things. Talk to us about where your mind was, uh, how is it that you gravitate towards more natural therapies um, and, and what made you make those decisions as a first time mom? Um, to be honest, I was very amazed at all the women that I have seen in videos and, and um, Instagram because I follow a bunch of pages that are like natural and they were talking a lot about, you know, going back to having babies at home. Um, and it's, it's, it literally has a book. You can write a book about all the benefits that you can have from having a baby at home. If you can, of course, you know, um, I have to say this a lot because people always think like 
oh, then if you don't need to go to the hospital, you will go, no, of course, if I need to go to the hospital, that's why the hospital is there. You know, it's, it's, it's a help that you have. If you have an, a specific problem that you cannot resolve at home, because that can happen too. You know, pregnancies are completely unpredictable. So, but yes, I was super excited to try something like that. My husband wasn't against, was against completely. I, he was like, no, we're not having our first baby at home. You crazy. <laughs> and, um, and it was, I have like three months trying to convince him, you know, like from the beginning, because I, I I knew very early, I was like five weeks when I, when I knew mm-hmm. that I was pregnant. So we were talking a lot, a lot and I was like, you know what, why don't you see this documentary? And I put him to see um, the business of being pregnant. I think oh. it's, is it the business of being born? Being born or, yes. This yes, is a born. yes. I saw it too. It was very powerful. Yes, it is. Because it's very raw, it's very, you know, like, uh, it's, it's a documentary. Mm-hmm. And he was traumatized. <laughs> he was like, wait a second. Then all this happened, you know, a hospital. And I was like, and this was filmed a lot of years ago. You know, like, mm-hmm. now it's a little, it's a little worse <laughs> than that. Um, and actually, that's, that's kind of like the time that when we met uh, Miriam, uh, our midwife. Hello. <laughs> Everyone, please welcome Miriam Maldonado. She is a licensed midwife and she plays a very key part in um, this pregnancy, right? You said so. yes, it is. <laughs> so I invited Miriam because she, well, we've known each other for many, many years, but she is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the birthing community, specifically the Hispanic community, which we're going to be touching on today. And um, she's just a great resource. So welcome, Miriam. Yay. (laughs) I'm not as pretty as you guys are. I'm sorry. I didn't get to find myself a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And Salis was just uh, letting us know. um, So please continue. You were were sharing with us. Go ahead. So... um, that's when I got um, I got pityriasis rosea. That is a it's an illness that you get in your skin. It's very uncommon, you know. And we originally wanted to give birth in a birth center, so we went to a birth center here in Miami. The closest we have, uh, we actually like the place. You know, we like the place. The place when where you give birth. Then we were down on the main you know, rooms where you get tested and you see the doctor. And that's when I was like, no, this is not, I don't feel good here. Of course, because because of COVID, you cannot be with anyone in the room. So I was alone all the time and I wasn't a very bad moment at that time because of the illness. So I didn't like that. I didn't like that tension. It was always someone different looking at me. The doctor never remembered me or my specific problem. And that happened for like a good month until I was like, no, we need to look out for another option because this is not working for me. And and if this is here in a birth center, hospital is gonna be is gonna be worse, you know? So uh, that's actually when I find a, a video in YouTube. And I was looking at it out. I, I looked, I looked at the video before, but I didn't knew it was Miriam on the video. Then I start following Miriam and find the same video on Miriam's website. I was like, wait a second, this is the same person and this is here in Miami. So this is happening. I don't care if I have to travel to like Jacksonville, you know? <laughs> um, so that's how I contact her and we start, you know, talking about everything. And we start a beautiful journey. <laughs> and then we connected. Um, let's jump into specifically the, the Hispanic, the Latin community in South Florida and how pregnancy is perceived. Uh, what are the norms down here? And you know, what, what it is that women, both of you, 
really would love to share with women and families, right? Because it's it's not just the woman. <clears throat> Oftentimes the woman is is greatly influenced by, you know, her parents, her spouse. So it's a lot of a lot of different things. But when it comes to self-care and and health care, which encompasses so much of a woman's life, um, what have you what have you seen? What are the, the biggest obstacles? Um, or what would you like to share specifically for the Hispanic community and, and families in South Florida? Let's start with you, Miriam. Well, I honestly was touching that subject uh, last week. Um, I'm really surprised how the Latin community is not in touch with their options. You know, they come from other countries uh, where OBs uh, are the most providers that take care of pregnant women. Um, midwives may not be available unless they're up in the mountains or in a very um, tribal area where resources are so low that doctors won't go to that area. So what I've noticed here in, in the 20 years that I've been practicing is that it's taking a long time for Latin women to really connect to that empowerment and also to know that there's other options. Um, even though I've been putting it out there, I've been educating now that the media is much more available to show, I've been able to be lucky enough to show live births and do live videos and continue educating in English and in Spanish, but you can still go to someone and say, oh, I'm a midwife and yes, I do home birth. And like, what is that? And I didn't know that was available. And what do you mean baby at home? They think more ancient, like more antiquity times where midwives were, you know, beyond the 1900s. Hmm. So I am trying to do a movement for that. I would like to be one of those resources and outlets for the women of all kinds, specifically Latin women to know that there are other options. And that has helped a lot of women in other countries to be able to travel here and to have their babies here in a different way with those options. Because in Venezuela, they don't have those options. In Colombia, they don't have those options. In Honduras, I mean, the more lower income, really third world countries, they don't have those options. Yeah. So I'm hoping that the Latin community will get, we're going to get there. We're getting there. And we're going to yes. do, we're going to stop this obstetrical violence that's going on. That's a whole so, different topic. Yes. So what I hear you saying is that you have a desire for birth workers, midwives, any type of maternity professional to become more educators and use the media outlets that are available to them. So the word can be spread, awareness can be spread about the different options, whether that means uh, women have to travel but just to be able to give them that, that experience and that care, is that what I'm hearing yeah, you say? Yeah, yeah, we all need to stay together and whether you're a massage therapist and you, and you take care of women that are pregnant, chiropractors, acupuncturists, there's so many other of us out there that we need to let women know that there are other options. And, um, you know, again, using the media helps because Sometimes even Googling doesn't give you, um, you know, midway free information. And I find it so sad that we can't get, we can't get our expertise or our type of practice or professional um, way, uh, forms of practicing out there to the people. When mm -hmm. I Google Midwife Miami, all the, all the um, search options I got were hospitals. Oh, so it's really interesting. This yes. is so weird how, you know, like they normally are not connected with hospitals, either, you know, like um, birth centers or they are on their own, like uh, Miriam. So I was like, this is so weird. How they make it so, so you cannot find it. <laughs> yes. That is how, what would you say to either a, a, a woman of either a minority background, a Hispanic background, Latin background, especially if there's a language barrier, right? I'm sure that when you come to a yeah. new country, everything's very new. But let's say that, 
you know, this woman is pregnant or, or planning a family, how would you, how would you describe self-care? What is self-care to you? And how would you help a woman understand, say you're advising a friend, um, this is how you find resources for inspiration, to find providers. What advice would you give? Well, um, there's two important things that I want to mention. Um, when I met Miriam, the main thing that, that, that it was a complete yes for me, it was that Miriam speaks Spanish. And we are actually speaking in English here, but we are, we always communicate in Spanish all the time. And for me, that was extremely important because I want my mom to be by my side. And on the birth centers, the person that was taking care of me she's from England so she doesn't speak any Spanish at all and I just kept thinking and stressing about my mom being in the in the room with me and she doesn't understand English so she doesn't know what's happening or how she can you know help me so for me she was she's not a doula but in my mind she kind of like acts or works as a doula for me you know because she's there taking care of me and my midwife is going to take care of my baby and me too, you know? So for me, it was like, no, because if I need to make a decision or she needs to know something or whatever, you know, she will not understand. And, and I'm going to be stressed out about it. I'm going to be like feeling alone, you know? So for me, that Miriam speaks Spanish was, I remember I cried because I was with my mom. I was like, oh my God, mom, like, this is so good. You know, like you're gonna understand everything. And she's been with us in appointments and she's super involved. So she's like, oh, okay, I understand this. And she started reading a lot. And that goes to my second thing. Um, and me, I think, and I spread the word a lot. And I feel like Miriam sometimes too, like no matter how much you spread the word, it's, it's, it's just, very few people that actually does that and speak from a point of uh, truth, you know? I'm not selling anything. I'm just telling you my story. And, and it's impressive how little um, resources we get to. Like, it's not that they're not there. Yes, there are few resources, but they're there, you know? It's only that we don't know. We, we don't know that we can go to massages. We don't know that we can get, um, you know, a midwife care. We don't know how insurance work with all those stuff. We don't know that there is so many other options besides just going to, you know, like regular sources. And I think the first thing that a Latin woman should do, um, it's read. There's so many books in Spanish and in English too that you can find about, you know, natural birth and better techniques and start educating yourself because this is not something that you're gonna find or they're not gonna tell you in the school, they're not gonna tell you in your family, then how you get educated, how you know more about the topic. So start reading. And I'm not just talking about, you know, buying a book. You can read blogs. There is a bunch of blogs. There is a bunch of internet sources, you know, and, and actually, it's interesting because when I put in, in Instagram, Miami midwife, the first thing that appeared was Miriam's face. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, like, if you just put that thing, you were going to find a whole new world. So um, <laughs> using the media in our favor, educating ourselves and dedicating time to ourselves. We, 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 we are always too busy you know, doing a bunch of stuff, work, family, kids, people that have kids, you know, and we forget that if we're not good, nothing is, nothing that is outside of us is going to be good. Not yes. our family, not our work. If you're good, everything else is going to be good because you're good. You right. can yeah, I think, Well, I, I think a lot of our, when we have prenatal care or when you meet the midwife is that we use a lot of modalities to take care of the woman. It doesn't always have to be all medical. It's not about just blood pressure, temperature, baby's heart tones. It's about nutrition. It's about self-care. It's about well-being. It's about mental health. How's your relationship with your husband, with your partner, with your family? And having those resources like yourself, that you're a massage therapist and that you're able to take care of women that are pregnant. And what other resources that you are available to give to them and vice versa, because 
a lot of women don't know they can go to the chiropractor or get massages from early pregnancy. I mean, I tell many moms, start self-caring yourself from the beginning that you are pregnant. And that is nutrition, hydration, massage, self-care, chiropractic, acupuncture, walking, even journaling, journaling your journey. How is it your relationship with your partner, with your family, your decision, whether it's hospital, home, or birth center, you still have to go through that journey. It's very right. important. So yeah. both of you have been recipients of massage, yes. uh, specifically, yes. <laughs> specifically neuromuscular massage, which is, is rare <laughs> in the South Florida region. However, I strongly believe that as we're uh, recovering from COVID, more people are going to be seeking hands-on careers. And walk us through, um, walk us through an experience. You say, Lisa, start with you. What would a woman expect when she gets everything from what you wear, what you don't wear? W walk us through an appointment. What would she expect when she gets a prenatal massage that's more results-based or clinical for pain relief. Yeah, I think that part is very important. And I'm gonna say something after, you know, about it because there's no all massages are neuromassage. That's how you call it, the term. Neuromuscular? Neuromuscular massage, yes. They're, they're not all like that. So when you get to um, an appointment, the first thing you do is you leave your um, shoes outside, you get inside. Um, we talk with Michelle, you know, we kind of like introduce ourselves. How was the week? You know, how you're feeling? What is the main concerns for this week? So I always start with like with my hips or, you know, my back, stuff like that. That always hurts when you're pregnant. And then she leaves the room. Um, I got changed. I live on my clothes in a specific part that she has there. And I get into the massage bed that she already prepared in a certain way. Uh, it's like on your side with a couple of, um, um, oh, I forget the name. Pillows? Pillows. With a couple of pillows. <laughs> uh, my Spanish English connection. It's okay. <laughs> with a couple of pillows. And then she gets in the room. Uh, oh, she always made you choose uh, oil that you want to focus on, on the session. I mostly go with lavender because I love lavender. lavender. So um, she started the session um, touching your body. It's very weird because I never got that before in a massage uh, room. Uh, she can like touch points in your body uh, and you have to count from one to five how much it, you know, you feel the pain in that specific place. So um, I'm always swinging between a three and a four in most of my body. So I just start touching, I start telling him, telling her uh, the numbers, and then she writes down kind of like the main focus for the session and she starts and she focuses on those specific parts. And we talk a lot. I'm never, <laughs> when I'm sleeping, I'm like, no. So we talk a lot and that's uh, pretty much it. You leave the room like new <laughs> and you remain new for the five, for the next five or six days. And then you need to go again. <laughs> uh, and then, so yeah. has it been, have we done deep, tissue work like have we have there been areas that have been worked on your body did you ever feel unsafe at any time um like yeah no. any any instance where we were working really deep let's say on your hips or on your back what would you say to a woman that says well I'm scared to get a prenatal massage I don't know if I'm going to go into labor what's been your experience now receiving prenatal massage specifically for pain relief all this time? Have you ever felt unsafe? Have you ever felt like you didn't have control of verbalizing the pressure? No, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm actually feel very comfortable, comfortable uh, when I'm in the room. 
even though it is, it, it is deep, you know, and, and you feel it, it is a pain that I qualifies as good pain because you kind of need to feel it. And after it's a lot better. And actually my hips and my glute area is always bad. So I never felt, you know, like, oh, she's just touching my glutes, you know, like it's, it's not definitely like that at all. And something that, that makes me feel a lot safer too is that my midwife recommended, you know, she was like, you need to go to massage and she actually recommend you. And, and believe me, Michelle is very far away from my home. And I, I do the driving because it's worth it. My, my body feels a lot better after it. So, yeah. Yes. Um, the last question I want to ask is, what would you say to a massage therapist that is curious about studying prenatal massage, but they're kind of on the fence. They really don't know, should I, shouldn't I? What would you say to a massage therapist that is curious about studying it? Uh, first of all, that there is there is um, um, there's a lot of people that are in need of those massages. So it is a public out there, you know, ready for you to be ready as a massage therapy. Uh, so I would say go for it. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be of great service. We need a lot of people, you know, and and it's very few people that actually do uh, prenatal massages. And, and in that specific way that you guys do it, like with the neuro, how it's, the, what is the term again? Neuromuscular. Neuromuscular. It's completely different from getting, you know, like a relaxed massage. It's, it's very like technique based or I don't really know how to describe it, but it feels different and it kind of like works for your body. So um, yeah, I was a goal. <laughs> Go for it. Don't think it twice. <laughs> Miriam, you've been Woo. in industry for so long. You've received massage therapy yourself. You've been a, part, a receiver of neuromuscular. How would you, you're very confident in being able to refer out to this. So I'll pose the same question to you. There's a great need for providers out there what would you say to massage therapists that are on the fence about either being scared to work with pregnant women? Do you see a need for it? Uh, how would you encourage or motivate them? Well, definitely there's a need for it because um, I think a lot of therapists or even people that are in, in this kind of realm of professionalism or services, they get scared of pregnancy. Uh, and they think that a mom that's pregnant is a high risk. Oh no, she's high risk. We can't touch her. We can't do this for her. But that's not true. I mean, if you do like yourself, a little uh, short evaluation, and obviously you have to feel comfortable that the mom is pregnant, um, knowing where to go for those uh, certifications where it enhances you to be able to provide those services so that you can feel comfortable and, and able to also provide that ambiance because not only do you have to feel comfortable, but the mom has to feel comfortable. And being massaged myself when I was pregnant because I suffer, as Michelle knows, my sciatica, my lower back, I mean, Ms. Michelle has been massaging my family for over 14 years. Wow. And uh, yeah, she massaged my oldest daughter when she was pregnant, then me when I was pregnant, and then beyond. Uh, and it's having that relationship. I think everything is a relationship. You know, you build that relationship with that person, that person that's going to touch your body and see your body in a different way. How do you make that ambiance and how do you make it feel comfortable for the person? I know a lot of moms that I say, oh, no, massage is great. It's self-care. Oh, I don't like people touching me. Or I, I know I, I don't I don't feel comfortable being touched. And I honestly think it comes from a bad experience that they might have had. And I think we need to be able to pass that barrier of how they're gonna feel again, you know, safe. I mean, I've had massages, you know, all over the place, even in spas and everything. And I, unfortunately there are some therapists that just lather some oil on you and they just rub your hands all over the place and nothing is being done. So building a resource again is very important, a platform where we can get people to know that this is safe during pregnancy and also postpartum. 
Many moms also need this through postpartum. Um, and the whole family needs it. I mean, children, husbands, even the husbands need it. They, you know, they're sleeping with a pregnant mom that's taking the whole bed and using a whole bunch of pillows and dad is being left like in the corner of the bed being all, you know, cramped up. So definitely um, women need to know that this, this is safe. This is safe with someone that's well qualified, that also feels comfortable providing the service, that has that specific ambiance to provide safety, security, and build a relationship as well. It's not just to go and rub some oil, it's to really help the mom get care for whatever reason they need, if it's whether they're lower backs or their sciatica or their shoulders from breastfeeding, if they feel pain or tension. I just think massage and overall is a life changing service and everybody should be able to receive this service. Honestly, it should just become a, for me, that would be a daily thing, but I know it's a weekly thing or it will be a monthly thing. <laughs> <laughs>